Welcome back, Emmanuel, to Third Hour. This is just a chance for Dan and I to sit down with the other pastors here at Emmanuel Bible Church, ask them questions about practical Christian living, especially during this time of coronavirus when things just aren't quite as normal as we uh, expect them to be. Uh, but surprisingly, so much is the same. Uh, we're joined today by Juan Ancaye. He is our pastor of Hispanic, Hispanos and Cristo here at Emmanuel Bible Church. So uh, thanks for coming. Juan. Thank, thank you for having me here. Yeah, I, I'm very excited. Um, don't tell anybody, but you're one of my favorites. <laughs> um, don't tell anybody. Um, I, I wanted to ask first just um, how, are you, how is Hispanos and Cristo doing uh, with all this and kind of how's your family doing? Thank you. Uh, Thank you for uh, that question, and thank you for the favorite one also. <laughs> uh, well, um, our family is doing fine. I have grown up children. All of them are, I guess, enjoying their homes. Um, we are together with, uh, with my wife in our home, doing the things that sometimes you don't have the time to do, and taking time to do those things there at home. The ministry-wise, um, everything changed that day when uh, we, we didn't have more the possibility to get together. Mm -hmm. And our ministry started to turn fastly in an online ministry, providing um, possibilities to meet together through some applications in the web. And we just uh, uh, missed one meeting, but the other meetings in our ministry started to run very well. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, a, that's a good thing, the technology that help a lot to get together all, all our ministries. So the services that you're doing now, are you just live streaming sermons like from your house? Yes, that's another thing that was something that had to happen very fast because the weekend was coming and uh, we didn't have time to prepare a special kind of uh, service online. Then just we decided to have the sermon uh, streaming from home. Uh, that was a good thing. The time, time came, uh, 12.30. We didn't have to wait that much. Just started preaching, and uh, then the sermon went fine. Uh, we had people uh, through YouTube and uh, Facebook listening or watching the sermon. That was, uh, that was great, yeah. What are, what are you preaching through right now in Hispanos? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> we finished um, our series of Mark. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, this is a series of... Um, a hundred sermons. This was the last sermon. I didn't want Hold to on. cut. You said a hundred. Yes. One hundred sermons in the yes. shortest gospel. That's yeah, it is it. true. It Everything is. about that, I love it. It is true. It is true. Well, if you if you just divide just the gospel, the probably is going to be less. Probably I may say like ninety, mm -hmm. eighty something. What happens is uh, in a times like, for example, Mother's Day or uh, Easter or Christmas Day, I. Uh, I asked some questions to Mark. I said how he thinks about Christmas, for example. Oh. It is not exactly, you don't find exactly mentions specifically about Christmas, mm -hmm. but his thinking is going to lead you to Christmas. Oh. Or his opinion, if you see the scripture in Mark, is going to lead you about what he thinks about Mother's, Mother's Day, things like that. Then that's why I have a hundred sermons there. I have some topical sermons, expository topical sermons together, a hundred sermons in Mark. Yeah, I finished. Thankfully, I finished. I didn't want to cut the series. Okay, so can I ask, what does Mark think about Mother's Day? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> the, the passage is coming right now in my hard drive, <laughs> in my mind. Um, what he thinks is, is, remember that passage, passage when Jesus, uh, uh, her mother, and her brothers went mm -hmm. to Jesus. Right. Yeah. And uh, Jesus said, my mother, my, my, my family, my relatives are those who do the will of God. He wasn't saying that he doesn't recognize uh, his mother. What he was saying is, if you do the will of God, you are my children. Then he was talking about an extended family. At the same time, he was approving their own family, the role of his own mom, uh, and the role of the church. He was talking about the extended family. Mm -hmm. Then family is very important for Jesus. Her mother is important, but that was a teaching moment. Yeah. It was a teaching moment That's really cool. for the people, yeah. That, uh, I'm not precisely what exactly I, I said in that sermon, <laughs> but it's online. So yeah. speaking of family, 
uh, in the extended family of Hispanos and Criso, mm -hmm. how are the individual family units doing? How is everyone weathering this strange storm? Yeah, that was, that was shocking for our congregation because we are kind of uh, a family oriented. Every culture is family oriented, but probably we are more like want to get together, two or three families together mm -hmm. more often. And that was shocking for us because we like to hug, we like, you know, we greet in different way. Well, uh, but that was shocking for our families. And uh, they are just remaining at home. Um, most of them are working. Some have lost their jobs and just waiting for what's gonna happen in, in, in the coming weeks. But they are, in general, they are doing fine. Some are in difficult situation, uh, um, but we are helping them. We are helping them, trying to get for them information they need, uh, wha how they can fix the financial situation. If that comes, we, don't, we are not seeing that much yet. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So what does that look like right now, just for the church in general? I mean, you guys are dealing with a couple of specific instances, but what does it look like for the church to serve and care for folks who are either out of a job or there's financial difficulty, especially at least now in Virginia, mm -hmm. the guidelines have extended this thing through mm -hmm. the next couple of months. Yeah. So if, if you're out of a job, you're out of a job for a while. Yeah. Uh, so what does it look like for the church to, to care for folks in that situation? Well, uh, first things, the first thing is the spiritual way to help, help them to face the situation, which is coming, it's coming from, for many people. Many people already know. They say like in, in a month and two months, this is gonna happen. They, they already know that. Uh, but we're helping, first of all, spiritually. Then, uh, then after that, I was reading First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, when Paul was comforting the people because they, they have questions. Uh, same thing with, with people. Then uh, helping them to get information, uh, especially how they can uh, fix their situation, how, wh what, what's going on exactly. Uh, right now with this uh, with this crisis, uh, but but by the other part by the other part we are helping each other. We have some kind of networks through text to to the web. If somebody is in need, uh, we immediately let them know everybody in that group their their need. Then we help each other. Mm -hmm. It is incredible uh, what happened one with one of our of ours. Um, uh, he was in need. Uh, then we immediately send the, the, the request to everybody in that group, it was the men's group, and they immediately responded, giving, uh, feeling the need. Hmm. And if it is uh, an other need that the church can do, we also do. Then in that way we are taking care of our people, one each, each, each other, as the scripture says, teaches us that take care of each other. Uh, that's what we are doing with them. Uh, we are continuing doing with them also. Yeah, I love hearing that example that it's it's not just kind of an institutionalized response of, you no. know, hey, here's a, a big vat of money or something and we're just yeah. dispensing it. But it's, hey, let's have believers care for each other. Yeah. That, that's what the church has always done and that's yeah. what we keep doing. Mm -hmm. We just practice the one another's. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's <clears throat> more complex layers of how we do that now because mm -hmm. of the distance yeah. between people, but that's so encouraging to hear. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've seen the same thing in our own ministry and I'm sure many churches are, wow. are seeing that. Speaking of um, distance between mm -hmm. folks, I mean, you've got family who lives in other countries. Yeah. Uh, you've got you know people who you know all over the world mm -hmm. uh, that you relate to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, now it kind of seems like people who are neighbors are mm -hmm. a million miles away, right? Yeah. Because they can't go visit each other, they're quarantined or whatever. It's true. Um, talk to folks, talk to us about uh, what it looks like to relate well to fellow believers to family members mm -hmm. uh, who you're not in the same house with right now? How, how do you bridge that gap well? Well, uh, one good thing is the technology. Technology keeps you connected instantly. There are several applications you can use to connect with them immediately. It's not like to be with them in person. It's not like that because you cannot see everything. You, you, you cannot transmit or you cannot just realize what's going on uh, you, you see if it's video conferencing, if it's video connection, you, you do that. But the, the best thing, I, I guess, to do that with people um, uh, living far, far from us is encourage them. Uh, the same thing as explain to them the situation and after that 
show them that we have our assurance in Jesus. The centrality of our life got to be Jesus. We live for the glory of God. Whatever happens to us is gonna be, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be, everything's gonna be fine, but it's gonna be for God's glory. And that's our satisfaction. That's what we wanna do every day, God's glory. With this uh, crisis, without crisis, whatever happens, our life is in Christ. Then you explain the situation, what's going on, and help them to have their hope in Jesus. That is our, I guess that's the, the source of our joy. This, when you remember your salvation. Yeah, amen. You remember that you are saved by the Lord. Your destiny is with God forever. Th these are just temporary things. We are foreigners in, in, this, in this land. This is not our home. Our home is farther than here in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that, I guess that's the best way to do because mm -hmm. you don't understand the context of other countries or other places, what they are, what's going on. You see the news, but the news is not going to show you completely how, what's going on there. But if you just rem remind them their hope in Jesus, yeah, that's going to comfort them. That's so helpful, uh, not presuming that we understand what mm -hmm. other folks are going through in, in every nuance of their situation, mm -hmm. but pointing them to the one thing that we do know mm -hmm. for sure we have in common, mm -hmm. uh, which is our, our shared hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, in light of that, what does it look like to, you know, the Romans chapter 12 tells us to weep with those who weep, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to rejoice with those who rejoice. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously not pretending that we understand mm -hmm. all the pieces of someone's difficulty that they're going through right now, but what might it look like via distance to weep with those who weep, mm -hmm. to be sorrowful, even mm -hmm. while we're sharing with them our hope, and mm -hmm. uh, God is obviously using all of this for his glory, and mm -hmm. there's so much joy in that, but mm -hmm. what does it also look like to bear one another's burdens, mm -hmm. to care for one another, to cry with one another in a time mm -hmm. like this? I guess what happens is always to listen, people, uh, because uh, even if you don't want you have something, m many things to say inside because, and uh, just to be a good listener uh, uh, of the people, because you need somebody to listen to you also. <laughs> and uh, um, we have to listen to others also. And um, that's a good thing. Sometimes people just want to talk, just want to express themselves. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you Do don't you know anything? <laughs> Just kidding. He's a good listener. Good oh, that's, uh, oh, that's great. That's great to know. <laughs> that's great to know. This is why one's my favorite. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, that, uh, I was just uh, thinking that because in, in this time you kind to feel things totally different because your world changed. That happened. Changed. Many, many things changed. Then you want to express yourself. You want to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not wrong to express what you are feeling. Uh, obviously, according to the scripture, feel according to the scripture, not, not different to the scripture. Uh, that's going to help to people, sympathize with people. We don't know how they are walking. Uh, we don't know what, how they are feeling, their, their situations, but helps a lot to sympathize with them. I guess that's what the scripture is uh, saying when the, uh, the Lord says, uh, cry with those we are crying. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sympathizing with the, with the situation they are living. It's, it's, it's harder when you try to sympathize with Christians from other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's difficult. Even, even, even uh, for me, going to South America, I mean, uh, I've been born in South America, it's, it's difficult to understand other cultures exactly uh, as they are. But I, I can always sympathize. I, just, I can always listen to them and comfort them in the main thing that we believe in. Uh, live for the, uh, God, God's glory. And if we can help them, we can also help them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that um, <clears throat> that's what makes the Psalms so important mm -hmm. at a time like this. Because even as we're weeping with those who weep or, mm -hmm. or rejoicing with those who are rejoicing, um, God in his kindness to us has given us in scripture this beautiful poetry mm -hmm. that is um, putting to words 
the concerns and the emotional responses that our own hearts are having. Mm -hmm. I think it's so helpful to be able to not only come alongside another Christian who's experiencing grief or fear uh, and encourage them with your own presence, but being able to open God's word and say, look, th God speaks to this as well. Mm -hmm. th this is what David says in mm -hmm. the same situation. Mm -hmm. have, you, um, have you come across any passages um, of Scripture mm -hmm. recently during mm -hmm. this time as you've been coming alongside the folks in Hispanos that mm -hmm. have um, spoken kind of directly to this circumstance? Yeah. Um, I was reading this passage this morning, perhaps um, not exactly the other days, but, but this morning thinking uh, about what to say for people, what to do during a time like this. Then I find in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 through 6, uh, it says, devote yourselves to prayer. In Spanish it says, it says, perseverar en oración, that means the same thing devote yourselves in prayer. It's a, it's a good time to pray uh, to the Lord. Sometimes we live busy lives. Uh, sometimes I preach like this, I say, without reflection. Mm. We, we, don't, we don't reflect in the things we are doing. We are living very fast sometimes. And the ego is like that. It's, it's just like this, all the time, mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. And this is one, one thing I find here in Colossians chapter 4. Uh, devote yourself in prayer, yourself in prayer. The second thing is, at the same time, verse 3, pray also for us. That's what Paul is saying. Pray for us. You have time now. Uh, you can pray for, for other people, especially like Paul is saying, for all those who are preaching the gospel, that the gospel can be understood and the, those who preach the gospel can explain properly the gospel, the people can understand the gospel. That's what they are saying. That's good things. The other thing I find here is walking wisdom towards the outsiders, which in Spanish says, and that's all I mean, sabiamente para, los de, para con los de afuera. And, and the next part in English, making the most of the time. That's beautiful in Spanish. It's redimiendo el tiempo. That's, that's beautiful in Spanish. In English, it's the same meaning, making the most of the time. Then you pray. You pray for others. But we need to make the most of our time now. Good stewards of the Lord's time that He given us to us for His glory. Then what we can do in this time for, uh, that we have sometimes plenty of time. Many people have plenty of time. They can just make most of the time. What's the wisest use of that time? Spend time with your family? Talk with your wife more? Talk with your children? Spend time with your children? Do a special projects at, at home. Sometimes those projects are waiting a long time, right? You may do those things. You may just make the most of your time using that time for God's glory in everything you do. Look for God's glory. If you fix something in your, in your house, do it for God's glory. If you spend time with your children, do it for God's glory. And um, if you want to do something at home that is, was waiting for a long time, do it for God's glory. That's going to improve uh, the relationship inside the uh, your family. One thing I find here very useful uh, in, in verse 2, stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Pray and stay alert in thanksgiving. It, it's true. Our situation changed. We are, the first day I didn't feel comfortable not to come to my office, not to do my, the things I normally do. But the, the scripture is teaching us to be, to be praying with thanksgiving. Even in this kind of situation, we have to have, give thanks to the Lord. Because He knows. He's sovereign. He knows everything. He has His purpose. We are not going to change His will for the humanity. We are not going to change that. Just let's accept that with 
thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, we can express, as you were saying, in Psalms, our, our feelings to the Lord. I guess that's the best thing, to express the Lord. There are several Psalms that are, uh, David mm -hmm. expresses his feelings to God. That's the right way to do, but not to your, to your brothers. <laughs> do it in front of God. If you feel kind of frustrated sometimes for these things that are happening, talk with the Lord. And uh, no, don't hurt your family. Talk with the Lord and do it with thanksgiving. Giving thanks to the Lord even for this situation because this situation is an opportunity for us to do something uh, that something is to, uh, to make good use of our time, uh, to be good stewards of our time to the Lord. Because it's not just stewardship for money, it's stewardship for your time, for our time to, uh, to the Lord. And I guess we, we should live always for the Lord and the centrality of our life always needs to be the Lord Jesus in our lives. And everything we do, everything we do, even in this situation, needs to be for the God's glory. And we, the believers, need to be creative to do the things for God's glory. Yeah. And I guess that's, that's going to be helpful for us. Yeah. Well, brother, thank you. That's such an encouragement. You're a huge encouragement to us. Thank you for your faithfulness and the way that you serve our church and, and even for just this time this morning in, in helping us think biblically through uh, how to weather the storm and and do it for the glory of God. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, Colossians 4 is a passage <coughs> uh, uh, that I memorized when I first came mm -hmm. on staff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a helpful reminder because Paul is not only encouraging them to pray, but to pray with him and for him yeah. in the work he's doing. And we're just reminded that um, ministry is a team sport. It's it's not a thing for professional Christians. It's a thing for Christians and for the church. And like Dan said, I'm so grateful for your partnership and for your friendship. Um, thanks. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you to, to to answer some questions and just serve the Lord with you guys. You are a great team to serve with. Thanks, man. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us again at Third Hour. Um, uh, and let us know how we can be praying for you. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, via email. Um, and until we see you next time, um, continue steadfastly in prayer.